Barbados, situated to the east of the West Indies, was one of the first English colonies in the early 17th century. In the colonial period, Barbados was the only Caribbean island that remained English. In fact, it has been English so long that it was even involved in the English Civil War in the 1640s. Within 30 years of settlement, Barbados came to be the richest jewel in the English crown as sugar farming became the new source of revenue. Over the years, Barbados became one of the most important seaports and was a center of supply and distribution for the English, Dutch and American ships. Sugar was exported by way of sailing galleons and these voyages took many months to complete. The sailors would be away from their wives and loved ones for long periods of time and looked for a way to show that their devotion, love and thoughts had always been with their families during their absence. So they used octagonal boxes that held the ship's navigational instruments and decorated them with intricate designs from colorful tropical shells. The patterns used hundreds and maybe thousands of shells, arranged in complex designs. Often there was a heart in the center or message with romantic wording, such as home again or forget me not when far away. The gift certainly looked as though it had taken the sailor months to make on his lonesome voyage and showed beyond doubt his love for his sweetheart. Well, that is the story the sailors were telling at least. In fact, these sailors' valentines were made by local craftswomen in Barbados from as far back as 1750 and were sold to the sailors as souvenirs. In 1878, these valentines became the signature product of the Curiosity Shop, which was opened by the Belgrave Brothers on McGregor Street, Bridgetown, Barbados. During this era, sailors' valentines became widely popular as the Victorians were fascinated by the romantic story, tropical shells and intricate craftsmanship behind this product. They made such a claim that even Queen Mary bought one and it is now present at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. In recent years, sailors' valentines have become collector's items. They are often sold at auctions and can be priced from anywhere up to $30,000. These antique sailors' valentines can be seen in Barbados museums, such as the St. Nicholas Abbey and the Barbados Museum and Historical Society. The sailors' valentine has rightly become one of the celebrated symbols of Barbados. Recently with a commemorative postage stamp set and a sailors' valentine themed entry that won the Chelsea Flower Show. Our Landis family was honored to contribute a floral centerpiece from our display gardens to this winning entry. At Landis and Blackwell, we hope to bring this proud tradition to a new generation and an international audience. The production process of the Sailor's Valentines we produce starts with the collecting of shells. Noel Van Bon is a disabled employee of ours and he carefully collects a range of shells in a variety of different sizes, shapes and colours. He collects these shells at Hawkock Beach located to the southeast of Ho Chi Minh City. The seashells collected are certified by sites and are not on the endangered species list. The process continues to a local workshop in Bin Young, which produces the finest quality hardwoods. The woods are from sustainably managed forests and the wood types can vary between mahogany, sapel or piancado. The warm natural glow of these tropical hardwoods enhances and complements to the shells and the overall display of the product. The brass fittings we use are also made in a local craftsman shop located in Ho Chi Minh City. The fittings are handcrafted with precision and detail. The brass hooks, clasps and logo plaque gives the valentines the traditional look which blends well with the wooden finish. Now to the master craftsmen behind these beautiful artworks. Hello, my name is Hugh and I was born in the Dong Nai province of Vietnam. In 2008, I came to Ho Chi Minh City to develop my career and earn money for myself. I was introduced to gemstone paintings and I studied this art for three years. 2012 was a very important year for me and this is when I began earning an income for myself from selling these paintings. The paintings were sold to many customers, both domestic and international. Countries like America and Japan were purchasing them and were astounded by the fact that they were handmade. Since I was three years old, I have always had a passion for the arts. 
When I saw paintings on the wall, I remember being fascinated by them and wanting to make my own. In my house, I would find scrap papers left on the ground and use them to draw and paint on. This passion for painting is what drove me to go to Ho Chi Minh City and pursue art for a living. When I was three years old, I unfortunately got the polio virus and became paralyzed in both of my legs and my right hand. Being disabled, many people discourage you and tell you that you won't be able to live a normal life or get a job. Even though I am disabled, I feel lucky because I can spend more time to focus on my art and prepare for the future. I have a lot of love and compassion for other disabled people because I know how hard it can be. I will try my best to be an example through my success and prove to the persons whom doubted me that I can do it. Though we may be disabled, we are very motivated and we can still work hard and contribute to society. In 2015, I met Colin Blackwell and he introduced to me his Sailor's Valentine project. This was my first time hearing about this art form and I was very interested. I discovered a relationship between gemstone art and shellcraft and bored from the techniques I had previously learned. I deeply enjoy making these Sailor's Valentines and I am improving each day. With my new job as an artist and the love for my family, I am truly happy to be where I am today. While making these Sailor's Valentines, my family has joined in the process. They have become very skilled at this craft and I believe we all share the same passion. In my future, I will continue to strive to do my best and develop my careers in both gemstone paintings and shellcraft. Finally, this takes us to the Enable Code team. Enable Code is a software company owned by Colin Blackwell and specializes in website and mobile software development. The company manages the Sailor's Valentine's website and coordinates the online marketing and advertising. The Enable Code team includes five talented disabled programmers. They are web programmers, Android iOS programmers, and a graphic designer. In Vietnam, there's over 15 million disabled persons, with about 80% of them being unemployed. At Enable Code, their mission is simple, to change the way developing countries perceive disabled staff. The company has been featured on multiple local television stations and the change they are pursuing will not go unnoticed. Our company has given these people the opportunity to explore their talents and earn a living doing something they enjoy. The result? Well, you can judge for yourself.